Hello everyone, welcome to Ask Kate with me, your host Kate, brought to you by the Children's Tumor Foundation. Today I'm going to be continuing a series of videos I'm developing in response to some questions that we received when our science team did a Facebook Live event in February. Not every question um, did we have time to respond to, and so I'm doing a few videos so that I can answer those here. Today I'm going to respond to a question that came from Herb. And what he was asking is whether we could give some updates on the latest research when it comes to NF1 and specifically the cognitive issues that we're becoming more aware of can be um, uh, have a big impact on someone who's living with NF1. So I think that's a great question, Herb, and I'm glad that you asked. So when I first got into working with NF1 patients, which would have been probably almost 15 years ago now, one of the common things we would tell families in a new diagnosis appointment was that we knew that, that children with NF1 were at a higher risk for learning disabilities um, as opposed to their uh, peers who were not affected by NF1. And so those learning disabilities could take a lot of different forms. Um, that could be something like ADD or um, attention deficit disorder. It could also be something more specific where they have issues with um, spatial learning, um, verbal or language delays. Um, it really could vary from one child to the next. At that time, we didn't really talk much about autism when it came to NF1. In the last 15 years, though, we've learned a lot, and we've seen that there does seem to be a correlation between children affected by NF1 and their uh, risk for developing autistic behaviors or being on that autistic spectrum. Um, and so we've learned a lot not just about the relationship between NF and autism, but about autism in general. Our, our understanding has really come a long way. There is some great research that has come out of um, the NF world that looks at the relationship between the actual type of mutation that a child with NF1 has and their risk for developing autistic behaviors or being on the autistic spectrum. Um, so there are some really interesting articles out there about that uh, correlation that they're trying to understand a little bit better. There are also ongoing research studies looking at things like Lovastatin is a medication that um, they have looked at to see whether it could improve cognition in children with NF1. Um, seems to have an impact when they study it in mice, and so that's something that they're looking at. Um, they're also looking at other medications, um, uh, Mofagine. And you can actually look a lot of this up if you go to the clinicaltrials.gov website. Um, it's just a search engine. It's actually pretty user-friendly. You type in the name of the disease, so neurofibromatosis type 1, and then I just typed in cognitive, and it gave me a, a list of studies that are recruiting, studies that have already been completed. Sometimes there's even a link to the results, and you can actually try to read some of those articles. Those are not always, you know, kind of non-science person friendly, and so um, something to keep in mind if you're going to do some of that research is maybe take it to your NF provider and ask them to kind of read it with you or discuss it with you. Um, to help you understand what it's really saying. We also have some great studies going on that look at resiliency in NF. Um, not exactly related maybe to cognition, but a lot of times if you've got a child or an adult who's maybe um, struggling with their social emotional skills, um, they have difficulty forming and making and keeping relationships with others, difficulty picking up on social cues, or a child who's really falling behind at school because of a learning disability. This can really impact their self-esteem and their understanding of their own self-worth. And resiliency is an idea that we can actually train our brains to respond differently to a negative stimulus. So the idea that, oh, I, I can't pass this math class or I, I'm having a hard time making friends at school, our brain will often go to a really negative place about what our, um, our value is. And resiliency can help us learn skills that we can say, you know, I can't pass this math class yet, or maybe I need some extra help, more help than, say, my peer might need. Um, or maybe I'm having a hard time making friends, but I can learn. Um, and so resiliency is really interesting, and, um, and CTF has been a part of funding some great research uh, when it comes to that. So I would definitely recommend doing some Googling about that. And in fact, actually what I'll do is I'll have us drop a few links below the video today to some of this research so you can kind of look at it for yourself. Now, as always, I love to hear from you guys. So if you've been involved in any kind of a research study when it comes to NF1 and cognition or resiliency or learning disabilities, um, I would love to hear from you. If you have questions about things that I'm saying, I also would love to hear from you. Or even just your personal stories of 
or how you what you've overcome or what you've had to face and obstacles when it comes to school and relationships in your own life living with and that so um, you guys are a great community and I love hearing from you so hopefully you'll leave some comments or send me some emails have a great day everyone